So we're going to talk about the different type of spins uh, that you get off the bat with the ball. So you got slice, hook, top spin, and then back spin, and then a knuckleball. Um, and we're going to look at it in very simple terms. So first I'm going to look at pitch angles and barrel angles, and then we're going to look at some different swing characteristics and which swing characteristics will produce which type of spin more often. So to start, I want to think of it in terms of just barrel angles and pitch angles. Um, so we got this fungo here. First, pitch angle. So generally, a pitch is going to come in. It, let's say this is the pitcher, this is the hitter. It's going to come in on a slightly downward angle. I think it's like five to nine degrees. Uh, but don't quote me on those numbers. So this might be flat. Pitch angle is going to come in slightly downhill. And this is going to depend on where he releases it from. So like how tall he is, is he over the top, is he from here? But in general, it's in that range, like five to nine degrees going downhill towards the hitter. And then there's also the other dimension of righty or lefty. So thanks in, in terms of, this is downhill, uphill. Now, so this way, now we need to think in terms of this way and this way, so like left or right. So a right-handed pitcher, depending on where he stands on the rubber, let's say this is the pitcher and this is the hitter where the ball's gonna end up. For righty, we're probably gonna see a little bit more of this, especially if he's on the third base side. So a third base side guy from down here is gonna get the most extreme angle. And then on the other side, um, a lefty from down here is gonna get this angle, which will be the most extreme. So that's just kind of the dimensions that a pitch can come in at um, in terms of downhill, uphill, and then side to side. So for our purposes, we're going to think about the pitch coming in just so we can understand some barrel stuff um, and what creates spin. We're going to think about the pitch coming in flat, so zero degrees, not downhill or uphill, so flat and then straight on, so it's going to meet the, the barrel straight on versus all the other stuff that we talked about, just so we can get a good understanding. So I'm going to sit on the ground and uh, go through here. So let's say this is the pitch and then this is the bat, right? So for a knuckleball, which is what we'll talk about first, it's pretty simple. All that's going to happen is the barrel would have to perfectly meet that pitch at a perpendicular angle, and this is a round object, this is a round object, so it's going to meet it directly behind and in the middle, so it's not going to be anywhere out here, it's going to be directly in the middle of the baseball. The middle of the bat is going to meet the middle of the baseball, so that the weight that's hitting the baseball is going to be distributed perfectly into the middle of the baseball and it's not going to create any spin um, on this object. So that's for a knuckleball. It might, it might spin a little bit, but in a perfect world, it's not going to spin at all. So now if we think about the slice, we're going to think in terms of a lefty. So here, uh, so we're going to think like the batter's here and we're a lefty. So to get a slice, if you think just in terms of pitch angle and barrel angle, all that happens is the barrel now meets the baseball here, um, so at an angle like this with the pitch coming in here. And what that's going to do, think about it when the ball meets the bat, let's say that my forearm here is the bat, if the bat's moving this way and the ball's coming in straight, it's going to go here. If it just if it were to just roll off the barrel, it's going to go here and create that spin. So when we're swinging, it's still going to create. It's not going to create as much, but it's still going to create that spin um, and that slice that we see uh, off the bat. And I want to think about swing characteristics and which one creates more slice. And I'll pick up the bat here quick. For me, the swing that creates the most slice is the one where guys literally lead with their hands. Because what we see there, if your hands aren't in front, or you're thinking about your hands being in front the whole time, 
your barrel's always behind your hands, right? So if your barrel's always behind your hands and you're just kind of pushing your hands forward, that angle is that same angle that we saw that created the slice. Um, so that's what happens there. You just, you see this barrel, or I'll, I'll do the demonstration, demonstration with my arm again. My elbow's gonna be the barrel. It continues moving forward instead of stopping and then letting, this is the barrel. Instead of moving forward and then stopping and letting the barrel uh, whip through, it just keeps moving forward. And that, those two forces right there create that spin for the slice. That's the, the simplest way that I can think about to explain it. Um, obviously, the real world is more complicated than that, but you get the idea. Now for hook, the other way, again, think about a lefty. We're going to just turn the barrel here. So, if you think about the same demonstration, this is the bat, barrel, or no, handle and barrel. If we meet the ball here, so the barrel's, or the the handle's moving forward, then the barrel swings forward, but it gets too far forward. What then happens is when the ball meets it, we're gonna, it's gonna create this kind of action, where like before we said, just rolls off this way and creates that, that spin. Here, it's gonna roll off this way and create this spin, which is that hook that we see that curve towards the line. Um, <coughs> So again, in terms of swing, and what's gonna create that, uh, people talk about losing the barrel early, and that's, when, that's what's gonna create the most hook. Whether it's outside pitch, inside pitch, outside pitch is probably gonna look like that. The barrel kinda comes around. People say come around the baseball, it's gonna come around it. You don't even have to roll over with your hands. You can keep there. But if you meet it here, uh, you're still gonna create that angle, and the ball's gonna go there, and like, conversely on an inside pitch, you probably are gonna get that rollover, but again, it's the same thing. You're meeting the ball with your barrel at that angle, so it's gonna create that. So swing characteristics that create that are when guys tend to lose the barrel early. Uh, some associate that with locking out the front arm, if you lock out the front arm, um, it's harder to keep the barrel on its right path, and you're going to do this versus kind of staying through there with a slightly bent or soft front arm. So that's, that covers the knuckleball, the slice, and the hook. Now I want to talk about uh, topspin and backspin. So topspin, this isn't really going to work for tops and backspin. But topspin <coughs> is simply when the barrel when the barrel creates a force on the baseball that causes it to spin this way. And there's a couple different things or combinations that can that can uh, force that. So either one, you just simply barrel's coming through and you hit the bottom of the ball. That's going to create this type of spin. On the baseball. The most exaggerated version of that, a ball that's fouled straight towards the backstop, the hitter misses underneath. This is backspin, right? We, we tend to think of backspin creating carry, but this is backspin where it's just going towards the backstop because you missed underneath it, creating that spin. Um, there's also some other things that can, you don't necessarily have to hit below the midline of the baseball to create backspin. If you, let's say this is the barrel, this is the ball, the ball's not moving, if you chop on a downward angle on the baseball, you can still create that backspin because it's literally pushing this side of the baseball down, creating that type of backspin. So that's why when guys talk about swinging down on the baseball to create backspin, that's the feel that they get. Um, especially off the tee, and I think this is where it kind of feels and what actually happens get mit gets mixed. On a tee, the ball is literally sitting there, it's not moving. So if you do swing slightly down on the baseball, you're gonna create that backspin 
and then you are going to get pretty good carry in a cage off the tee um, with that backspin. Now the problem is once you get in an actual game, if you, if you take that same swing, so if we go back to the demonstration, let's say now that the pitch, or the, we're not in a perfect world, and the pitch is actually coming down at that five to nine degree angle, if this is your bat and you're swinging down on that ball, um, it, it becomes very hard to square that pitch up, right? Yes, you're gonna create, you're probably gonna create backspin. I mean, you could also create topspin if you hit the top. That's more unlikely than the backspin. But so you might create that backspin, but what happens is too much backspin is not a good thing either. So if you're doing that and you create that backspin, we can see they come down and meet here. Either it's going to go here or you're going to get a pop up. Or you'll even see guys hit deep fly balls that seem to kind of hang up in the air for a while. And what that is is getting just a little bit too much backspin because as you create more RPM going this way, there's more friction on the ball here um, through the air, so it kind of causes it to hang up versus a little bit less. Um, it's gonna carry better because there's not as much friction from the seams turning this way against the air um, too much, and then, it, like I said, it causes it to hang up. So in terms of the swing characteristics and creating backspin, I think it's important to feel what it's like to create backspin. So this is, a lot of guys on the tee, you'll see them swing down more and, I, and then in a game. Like pro guys, for example, you'll see, you'll see them swing down on the tee. Then in a game, you're gonna see them get more there, right, versus where they might be there on the tee, here versus here. And what they're doing is, in a game, the ball's coming at a slightly downward angle. So they're just matching their barrel path um, to create that same type of backspin that they feel off the tee. It's just if they swing the same way, the game is off the tee, they're gonna create too much backspin. Um, so they're just compensating for that once they get into the game. And again, that gets into feel what you feel and, and what that produces in the game. And that's a conversation for each individual hitter. We're just talking spins here. So we covered slice, hook, knuckleball, Backspin, now a top spin. Top spin is just the opposite of backspin. So all you're gonna do at the bottom of the ball creates this type of move. And again, the most exaggerated version of that is if you just nick it and it kind of spins down here um, with that top spin type movement where it kind of gets here and then skips out and, and rolls forward. So nobody wants to create top spin. <laughs> Uh, I've never heard a, a hitting coach or anyone in baseball really say, you know, top spin this baseball. If your hitting coach says that or anyone says that, uh, find someone else. So in terms of swing characteristics and what causes that, uh, guys who tend to, I think when, when I see this the most, it's guys who tend to kind of sit back and swing too much uphill. Right, so again, like we saw with backspin, when the ball is stationary, this is gonna create more backspin. Swinging down, well, likewise, if the ball is stationary and you're swinging up, that's gonna create more topspin, right? So if we then translate that to the game where the pitch is coming at a slightly downward angle, but you're still swinging up at a greater angle that the ball's coming down at, that's gonna create that create more topspin. Um, so guys that tend to kind of sit back and go here, there, where you're swinging up at a greater angle that the pitch is coming down at, down at, if the pitch is coming down at five to nine degrees, and you're swinging up at, I don't know, nine to 13, um, you're gonna increase the chances that you hit that topspin ball just because you're creating that force on the baseball that literally uh, creates that spin forward. So I hope that helps you guys out, just kind of understanding different barrel angles, 
um, where you where you meet the pitch, depending on what angle the pitch is coming at, and how that all relates into the swing. Different types of swings that can create different types of spins. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps explain it to you. So just to finish out here, a good swing is one that matches the plane of the pitch, really. Um, so again, that's going to be pitch is coming down slightly. It's going to be up slightly, and this is in the game. It's going to be swinging up slightly, not too much, because then we create that top spin. We don't want to swing down too much, because then we create too much back spin. And we also don't want to kind of carry the bat forward without ever letting the, the barrel whip through, but we also don't want to whip through too early, uh, roll over, or even just, we can keep the bottom hand here and still whip through too early. That's still going to create that kind of hook. So, <clears throat> Just the, the, the goal here is to, I mean, not create any of those different spins, but instead meet the ball, you know, in a perfect world perfectly and create that flush contact, um, which will then create the good carry on the baseball and get maximum velocity and distance.